Well, hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another video. In this one, we're going to take a look at this old thing. And I honestly have no idea what it was, but I do know that it sort of exploded. Stay tuned. Whether at work or while making YouTube videos, I'm always on the lookout for ways to boost my productivity. So when Magic Mind reached out to me about trying their matcha-based, nootropic-packed productivity shot, well, I was skeptical. Honestly, I didn't think I was going to go through with the sponsorship and even told the company that. But they offered to send over a free trial and even agreed to let me film a longer video giving my complete and unfiltered thoughts, which you can check out in the description. I drink way too much coffee, at least two to three cups a day, if not more. And every time I've tried to cut down on caffeine, I get headaches and a crash right around 3 p.m. Magic Mind includes a variety of nootropics. They can potentially help with focus or stress, but the thing that stood out to me was L-theanine, which has been shown to potentially help with the common caffeine crash. So I decided to only have one cup of coffee for the three days that I tried Magic Mind, and I was pleasantly surprised. I didn't get any headaches or the urge to reach for that second cup of coffee. I also didn't experience the afternoon crash I've come to expect, and overall just felt like I had three really productive days. If you're looking for something to give you more mental focus and energy, or to help reduce stress, consider giving Magic Mind a shot. No pun intended. Right now, you can go to magicmind.co slash hardwarehaven and use my code hardwarehaven to get up to 56% off your first subscription for the next 10 days. Give it a shot, guys. So this thing is obviously fairly old and it was given to me for free for, for, for obvious reasons, but I thought it was interesting. I didn't get into computers until this was well past being, well past being relevant. So this is all a bit foreign to me. And so I thought it would be a bit fun to just take a look at it and see if we could get it working and I don't know, play around with it. I really don't know where this video is going. I don't have a script. I don't have any sort of direction. I just thought it'd be really fun to try to tackle something that's completely out of my comfort zone and you know, area of knowledge. So I do have something sort of interesting about this. I'm I'm not the best YouTuber. I'm, I'm pretty inexperienced. I've been doing it for about a year, but I, I'm clearly, I clearly need to learn the ropes a little bit more because I missed out on an incredible opportunity for content because you see, I, for some reason thought, oh, I should, you know, I don't, I don't like to ruin the, the genuine reactions or authenticity when I'm doing something like this. But for some reason I had this thought in my head of, well, I should just test it just to make sure it's not going to burn my house down or something. And that's where the amateur YouTuber in me became very apparent because that's content, you know, if I burned my house down with this, it'd be content. So I decided to plug it in just to see what would happen when I even tried to boot it up. Um, I actually didn't even have a VGA cable handy, so I couldn't have even seen a post or anything. I was just curious if it would even turn on. And as soon as I plugged in a cable to the power supply and flipped the switch, there was a big pop, big flash, and a magic little puff of smoke that no one likes to really see. Uh, and I totally didn't film it because I'm, I'm kind of dumb. So hopefully, um, maybe the graphics department here at Hardware Haven can throw together a great 3D render to really give you an idea of what it looked like. <laughs> this is dumb. So yeah, the power supply seems to be shot. Um, I'm probably gonna open this up here in just a second and maybe take a look and see what that looks like and probably try to throw on a different power supply <laughs> and hopefully it won't that won't kill it either. I'm kind of I'm kind of wondering if there may have been just some like dust that had accumulated or something like that that maybe caused a short. Um, but we'll we'll pop it open and take a look and then hopefully we can just throw on another ATX power supply and see if this thing posts. So I think yeah, I think I'm going to try to crack this thing open really quick. There's instructions on the back, I think. You can't see it. I did take a look at this when it was given to me. Um, so I have popped it open, but it's been a little bit, so I believe Sorry, I don't have the best way to record this. Still kind of working that out, but I believe this. Okay, you just gotta brute force it a little bit. Yeah, we pull the the front little panel off, and then this slides out. I had other stuff down here fall down. Oops. Okay. Uh, this is a lot older than anything I ever have looked at on this channel or really in my life. So this will be a lot of fun. 
I did notice, I don't think you can see from this camera angle, I'll get some, some B-roll. In Sharpie, it says good power and then fan going out and then it's scratched out and then it just says, I think it says fan replaced, I'm not sure. It's just really ironic that the power supply says good power right on the front of it. All right, let's just go ahead and start taking this thing apart. Let me grab my tools. Maybe not the best camera angles here, but I will uh, probably grab my phone and film some stuff once I actually get it apart. So we have good power. <laughs> good power, not, not so much. Um, I'm actually kind of tempted to crack this open really quick and see if we can see what died on me. Yeah, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and do that. I will say I will point out it's kind of interesting that this only has a 20 pin. There is no four pin for the um, 12 volts for the CPU. See, I'm showing my inexperience here. I thought that was pretty much always part of the ATX standard, but I guess not. But this is only a 250 watt Inspire power supply. Granted, it doesn't say, it doesn't say ATX on here anywhere. I'm not sure. Let's go ahead and crack this thing open and see if we can't see anything interesting. Okay, so I'm not sure how well you can see this, but there's this little daughter board that I took off. By the way, don't, if you're opening up a power supply, don't open up power supplies unless you really know what you're doing. It can be dangerous. Um, I've let this sit for a few days and I'm ma still making sure not to go anywhere near touching these capacitors just to be safe. So just be safe opening up power supplies. It's not, don't, don't do it. Just don't do it. Okay, cool. All right, but here, you can see on this little daughter board. Yeah, something got a little toasted here. It's also crazy that this is just, this is pretty old. This is well past, <laughs> this looks like a project someone put together on their own time, that's crazy. But yeah, it looks like uh, maybe a capacitor exploded here. I can't quite tell, but it's it's pretty bad. So we're going to move on. Okay, so moving on from the power supply, just coming back to this, um, I knew it was an AMD system just because I saw on the, the front there, the old school green AMD sticker. So I'm not really sure what the processor is. We can look really quick. All right, what do we have here? Spectec P16 M648, no idea how much RAM this is. My guess this is that this is DDR. It's not DDR2, so my guess is this is DDR. Not really sure. We'll find out, I guess. Hope Maybe, hopefully. I also just noticed this is really weird. There's only three DIMM slots, not four, because I guess this is probably single channel, so it doesn't really matter how many, if there's an even number of slots, you know. So one, uh, three slots is super interesting. Huh. So we do have a graphics card or a display adapter or something here. Let's go ahead and see what that is. Oh boy, Vanta? I have no idea what this is. Who knows? I may throw some models up here on what this is, but it has one VGA output that's missing a screw there, but no idea what this is. We'll find out as well. But this, uh, it also has, my guess is a base 10 ethernet card here. Also, I think these are PCI slots, and this is a, oh gosh, I forgot what the name of it is. I totally forgot the name of the slot. I'll probably pop that up here too. I promise I don't normally like being this ignorant. It's just, it's fun for videos, you know? All right, we got an Intel card. Here we go, Pro 100S desktop adapter. I'm curious if that 100 stands for 100 megabit. We'll find out. Uh, but yeah, interesting, PCI, I think this is PCI. Or this may be, I'm not sure, this is the same. No, it's not the same pinup. I don't know what these cards are. We'll find. <laughs> I feel so dumb. This is weird. Okay. I think I don't want to. Oh, I should finish the specs here. Um, we have some kind of AMD CPU. We have an optical drive. I'm imagining that's just a CD drive based off the connections here. Um, I think this is a IDE, right? I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, I believe these are IDE cables. Once again, this is before my time of working on computers, so this is a bit foreign. We have the floppy drive here, um, a hard drive. Let's find out what this is. I'm gonna try to be really careful with this because this may be our only chance at booting into an operating system. Hey now, there's a screw over here that I can't get to. I 
this cage supposed to come out? I'm confused here. Okay, that's weird. This whole cage comes out. Not what I was expecting. It's kind of cool though. Some of the old, some of these older cases have some cool concepts in my opinion. Oh, it's because it's screwed in on both sides. So we'll take this whole assembly out really quick. <laughs> that's not a good sign. Uh oh. All right, so we have a Seagate Barracuda 72 RPM, 40 gigabytes. It's actually, I was nervous it was gonna be even smaller than that. This seems like it may be newer than the rest of the system, but it does have a giant red X on it. So maybe not the best, maybe not the best sign here, but it at least has the IDE connections. It's not a SATA drive, so. But yeah, this could be tricky if we, uh, I don't, I don't think I have any other drive I can connect to this. This is pre-SATA and I don't think I have any SATA PCI cards. So hopefully this drive works. We'll find out. I think now I'm actually gonna go dust this off just to make sure I don't have a similar incident to the power supply if dust is really bad. I'd rather go ahead and dust it out and then I'll come back, put a new power supply in it and we'll see if this thing boots. That'd be crazy if it did. I can't imagine it. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go clean this out. Okay, so I am back. I took this outside and just dusted off some of, some of the big stuff off the motherboard just so I didn't have any sort of incident with, you know, something catching fire or shorting because of the dust buildup. It really wasn't that bad, but yeah, I just wanted to be safe there. And then I also went and grabbed this EVGA 650 watt gold power supply that I've used for a lot of stuff. It is awesome and I really hope I don't kill it. I had to run up to the attic to find the Molex adapters because I didn't have those down here in the studio with me. We have Molex to the hard drive. We have 20 pin here to the motherboard. And those are the only power connections I could really think of to do. We can't, we can't run the floppy disk. Ah, bummer. I don't have anything to test that with. I also didn't hook up this front fan because I don't want it to start blowing dust everywhere if I didn't clean that out very well. And I have a keyboard up top in the USB port on the back. I'm hoping that will work. I don't have any PS2 keyboards or mice. But yeah, I think we're... Oh, I need to plug in the VGA cable. Okay. I think we should be good. I don't know if you can see this monitor. I don't think you can. Um, once I get this up and running, if I do, I'll hook it up with the screen capture. I just didn't want... With how old this is, I didn't want it to have any issues with a capture card and, you know, think it's not posting because of that. So I just have it hooked up straight into this VGA monitor. I'm gonna plug this in and hope for no magic smoke. I'm gonna turn this where you can see it probably a little better just in case. Here goes nothing. Okay, nothing blew up. That's a good sign. Which ones? Okay, we have a bad fan. I don't know if you can hear that. Wow, I was not expecting this. Uh, I feel like this is like a fake YouTube reaction. That is so annoying. Hopefully it's not too loud to you, but uh, yeah, I feel like this is like a fake YouTube reaction, but I'm genuinely shocked that this turned on because I was not expecting that to be the case. I'm gonna try to switch this over to screen capture and see if I can get that working and I'll be right back because there's no way you're gonna be able to see this. So give me just a second. Okay, so sadly the screen cap's not working. I also realized I didn't plug in the IDE cable for the hard drive, so which is fine because I'm just trying to get to the BIOS right now. So I will try to have some like B-roll or something so you can see this. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of didn't expect it to boot and I didn't expect the screen cap to not work. So yeah, so this is what we have. I'm gonna make sure I'm not too much in the way. Okay, so let's see if we have Standard CMOS features. Now, I want to know the specs. I just want to know the specs. It's weird that there's not a just straight up, here's the current CPU temp 37C. That fan is buzzing though. Yeah, nothing. So we'll save and exit. I know it showed the CPU a minute ago when we first posted, so I'm just gonna try to, there, yeah, there we go. 
Okay, main processor, AMD Athlon XP 1.100 gigahertz. We got a one gigahertz processor. That's kind of kind of better than I thought this might be. Memory testing 262144K. Oh my gosh, what, do we have two megabytes of memory, I think? I'm not entirely sure. Obviously we have no disks and floppy disk fail. That makes sense, we don't have anything plugged in. What happens if I hit F1? Okay. I'm not sure what's going on here. This is so cool, honestly, though. I can't believe this turned on. Let's try uh, plugging in this boot drive and see what happens. Let's turn it on. Let's see what happens. Windows 2000. Oh my goodness, fan, though. Starting up, baby. Let's go. I'm going to try my best to remember to get some B-roll of this. Gosh, I really want to get this working on a capture card. <laughs> oh my gosh. Now I did say I, I haven't messed with computers with like building or or working on them with being this old, but I did use computers that were this old. My first laptop that I kind of had that I got to use as a kid was my dad's old work Windows 95 laptop. And this is bringing back memories, man. All right. Okay, well we got this turned on and working. I think I'm gonna try to figure out a replacement for this poor fan. And I think I'm going to get this guy nice and, and cleaned up. And then we might try to do something cool with this. We might try to mess around with some Windows 2000. <laughs> I don't really know. I'm just excited this has worked. Uh, yeah, I think for now though, I'm going to get this actually cleaned up and uh, not so gross. Okay, so this is Colton from the future and I did get that system cleaned up and I even made some upgrades, but that's all going to be coming in a part two. And in part two, I'm also going to be messing around with Windows 2000 Professional a bit and figuring a lot of things out that I didn't quite get to in this video and run into a lot of problems as well, but it's gonna be a lot of fun. So make sure and stay tuned. Also, don't forget that you can go to magicmind.co slash hardwarehaven and use the code hardwarehaven to get up to 56% off on your first subscription for the next 10 days. That's about it for this one though, so thanks for watching, stay curious, and I really hope to see you in the next one. Thank you.